What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video I'm bringing some fun Pokemon to the Weather Cup in the Ultra League, as it is now in rotation. We're going to be using Caldeo, Kyrium, and Lantern. Now one thing to note, my Lantern is like barely XL. You guys can see the combat power over there, 2081. It was a lucky trade that I had, and I only had 30 XL candy, so it's only like level 41.5, but it's bulk, and it's typing, and it's moveset, is perfect for this meta. Now, Keldeo is the spicy feature today, Poison Jab and Sacred Sword. If you guys have a lot of extra candy, you can unlock that second charge move, um, but ultimately there's not too much extra coverage. Maybe you could pick up x Scissor, maybe you could pick up Hydro Pump, but ultimately I found that just Sacred Sword worked just fine for me. And Kiram as well is a Dragon Breath Glacite, which is a Legacy Ice move and Dragon Claw. So really fun team here and hope you guys enjoy. All right, getting into the first battle, we have Keldeo versus Empoleon. This is beautiful. Now, Keldeo is a mythical Pokemon that is water fighting with Poison Jab and Sacred Sword, and it is also an extremely high attack weighted Pokemon, which means it hits like a truck. Now, we do get a shield right there, and we are outpacing this Empoleon to charge move, so we're going to go ahead and shield now and look to go for another Sacred Sword, and then I want to try to catch a charge move here on Lantern. What I found with Keldeo is that if you can get it um, shields and come back in with a lot of energy you can sweep now we're gonna go ahead and swap to try to catch the charge move they, they, they're deciding to stay in I can speak today they're deciding to stay in and go for the charge move anyways lantern resists ev everything so I'm gonna go ahead and let this go as it is just gonna be a hydro cannon and we farm down and they surrender well that's gonna be a good game I have no clue what they have in the back but my guess is they were very weak to lantern Good game. All right, moving to the next one. We got Keldeo versus Poliwrath here on the lead. Now, Keldeo only needs to really watch out for Dynamic Punch, but some Poliwraths may be opting to run with Scald and Ice Punch, which has really good coverage on this meta. So, we can just go for straight for Sacred Sword. It does quite a bit of neutral damage, and as you can see, the Poliwrath is already below 50% HP. So, we're going to go ahead and let the charge move go through. It is just going to be a Skull. Not too much right there, but our attack did drop, unfortunately. So, we're going to go ahead and go for one more Sacred Sword here, and then we're going to look to, if they decide to stay in, we're going to look to farm down um, and give up a shield here, because I want to have a lot of energy on the back end, and they may be weak in the back to Caldeo, so we're going to go ahead and see what they decide to do. Now, in comes a Charizard, so we're going to go ahead and counter swap into Lantern, and they're deciding to stay in. This tells me that they might actually be very weak in the back, and that's what's so cool about Lantern, is in this meta, you have a lot of Flyers and Waters out there, so Charizard, Gyarados, Jellicent, every single water type Pokemon out there. The only Pokemon you really need to watch out for are those grass types, and the most common being something like Abomasnow or Cradilly, um, which is why we have the combination of Keldeo and uh, Kiram here, but the Surf there is going to be able to almost take out the Charizard. We can safely let through this charge move. We want to save this shield as Dragon Claw is not going to be enough to take us out. And the final Pokemon is going to be a Blaziken. Now, this is going to be still kind of tough. Blaziken has um, a good move set to take us out, but we do get the final shield there. So we're going to come in with Keldeo and look to go for Sacred Sword. And you guys are going to see just how hard this Pokemon hits. Again, it's very heavily heavily attack weighted as sacred sword there does over 50 percent hp and we should be able to get to another one in time so that is going to be a good game very well played it was so much fun this is the first time i have ever used this pokemon i powered it up for the first time it was over 1500 already so i couldn't even use it in the great league and this is yeah breakthrough series right here which is beautiful now i think they decided to close the app right there because now they're stuck in with charizard that i have to fast move down but that's going to be a good game all right moving into the next one we have keldeo on the lead versus typhlosion so this is going to be really interesting um, obviously we resist the blast burns right here but we do need to watch out for potential solar beams and poison jabs are just really starting to add up and sacred sword as well Again, just like we saw against Blaziken, it does an incredible amount of neutral damage. We're already putting shield pressure down early. Now, we do see them swap into Gyarados, so I'm going to go ahead and build up to two Sacred Swords. And then now come in and just lock down here with the Lantern. Now, if you happen to be a bit more um, lucky in terms of, not maybe not lucky, but you've grinded more resources than I have, 
and you have an XL Lantern that's actually a lot better than mine, then this matchup is going to be just insanely better for you. But for me, I have to play it very carefully because the Dragon Breath and the Crunch is really going to add up, but we still utilized our typing very well. Now we do see Obama Snow come in, which is going to be a very common Pokemon that you see in this meta, and ultimately you want to keep the Lantern away from it. You're really not going to be able to do a lot as Thunderbolt and Surf are all resisted. So we're going to go ahead and let the charge move go through. Our win condition here is basically coming in with the uh, Kiram here and uh, going against the Obama Snow with Dragon Breath as we only take neutral damage from the charge moves coming out from Obama Snow. We just make sure we have shields for Typhlosion because it does have a lot of energy. So we're probably going to see a swap in right here, which we do. We're going to go ahead and safely shield this charge move and then counter swap back into the uh, Keldeo and go for the double Sacred Sword as we built up to it when that uh, Gyarados safe swapped in. So Sacred Sword does get a shield. We're going to go ahead and go for another one. And this is going to be a good game as this just does so much damage that it's going to force Typhlosion to throw its energy right here before they go down. And now I can let the Kiram finish this game off with Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw. So we go down to the Blast Burn. That's okay. We're going to take this Obama Snow out here with a Glacite, which is a legacy move. Um, so it's going to be a good game and I actually love this move because it's like guaranteed to lower your opponent's attack. It's beautiful and it hits pretty hard. So it's a really strong move. All right, moving to the next one. We have Keldeo on the lead versus Kiram, shiny Kiram at that. Now what I've noticed is a lot of opponents might just get very confused with seeing a Keldeo. Honestly, no one's really used it in Go Battle League, like ever. So it comes at no surprise that we get a lot of no shields in situations where they should be shielding, and it kind of throws them off. So we're going to go ahead and invest a shield here to stop the Dragon Claw, but they actually went for Glacide instead to lower my attack. But that's okay, we're going to go ahead and throw another Sacred Sword here against the Credilly, and then we're going to swap out now into our own Kiram right here as Dragon Breath and Glacide is going to do a ton of damage in this matchup. Now, I know Kiram looks like it should be part steel, but it's not. It's Ice Dragon, which means Stone Edge nearly one-shots us right there, but we were able to hang on and get this Glacide off, which means we might just be able to flip this mid-game matchup if they decide to try to farm us down as the attack did drop. So now they're forced to throw Dragon Breath out there. I think right there would have taken them out, which would have been beautiful. But now they actually have no energy, which is perfectly fine by me. We know their own Kiram is low. We know Credilly is now gone. There could be a bomb of snow in the back, but we will have to see what they decide to bring in. It's actually going to be an Alolan Ninetales, and this is a Powder Snow Alolan Ninetales, which is perfect. We have Poison Jab as a fast move on a very attack-weighted Pokemon, so we're doing a lot of super effective damage. And they decide to go for a Weather Ball, which is going to be heavily resisted right here. So I can safely let this go through. Go for another Sacred Sword. And as you guys can see, these Poison Jabs are adding up. Now, they tried to catch the Charge move, so good attempt on them, but I held the energy. And then we will Counter Swap into our Lantern here to close the game out. As the uh, typing here on Lantern is just beautiful against a Powder Snow Weather Ball um, Alolan Ninetales. They'd have to land multiple Dazzling Gleams in order to take us out, which is not going to happen. So they will decide to surrender right there. So good game. All right, moving next one. We got Keldeo versus Jellicent. All right. So this, while as fun as this Pokemon is to use, it is tough to face off against when you have an extreme triple hard counter team. So we have Jellicent on the lead into Keldeo. Every move that we have is resisted, so we can't do a lot there. And then we have, now they, they did shield the charge move right there on Alolan Sandslash. I think that was a mistake, um, ultimately, but maybe they weren't aware of the moveset. That's totally fine. These are somewhat new Pokemon in this Ultra League meta. Um, so we are not going to be winning this matchup here against the Alolan Sandslash, and hopefully they don't have a Bomb of Snow in the back, but if they do, there's not a lot this team can do. So you can counter this team relatively easily, right? If you have extreme hard counters, just like we know in Go Battle League because it is blind threes. But I will say, if you have the extra resources, give Keldeo a try, and you could put it on a lot of different teams because I think the Poison Jab Sacred Sword combination can be very deadly against this meta. But we get the Sandslash low, and now this is kind of a tough situation because I, ca I can't do any damage to the Jellicent. I really can't. Double resisted Sacred Swords, Poison Jab is resisted. We're not going to be doing a lot, so we just need to soak the damage here from Sandslash. And because the attack debuffs from Glacite from the Kiram, 
the bulldoze is not going to be doing too much damage so we can safely tank these two and then we will look to go i'm trying to build up to basically 100 energy we'll go ahead and go for a sacred sword here to take it out and then we're going to have to swap into lantern right away and pray that they don't have a hard counter in the back so we're going to go ahead and swap right away and the final pokemon is in fact Bomba snow so that's going to be a good game I could, what I'm going to try to do is stall the switch clock here by just going straight surfs um, because it is lower energy than Thunderbolt and the more charge moves that you do, the less time in combat basically with fast moves you're going to be facing off against. So we're going to go ahead and just double shield everything, try to delay the switch clock and hope that I can get to two sacred swords before they try to swap out. Now I have one charge and I think, um, I think it's one and a half. I don't have too fully loaded but we're going to see if we can get to it before they can swap out because we'll definitely be applying shield pressure on that first one so we do land another surf which is perfect they're starting to get low we're going to go ahead and shield right here and then now this is going to be a dangerous race because i'm going to go ahead and swap out and go for the sacred sword but ultimately their switch clock now is basically back up so i don't think i'll have enough time to get to another one as they will counter swap back in as you guys can see we're just going to get farmed down so that's gonna be a good game triple hard locked right there against obviously very dominant meta pokemon but no team is perfect every team has counters it's it's pokemon welcome welcome to the world of pokemon but it was so much fun i'm telling you guys it was so much fun to use Keldeo today as we're stable still able to chip down some health here so if i can get this thunderbolt off before they get to another charge move we might have a, pot a potential chance to beat obama snow so we're going to go ahead and try to go for the thunderbolt but no they do get to the shadow ball in time so that is going to be a good game very well played all right we're going to go ahead and move into the next one and see how well Keldeo continued to do for me this morning. We have Keldeo on the lead versus Agron. All right, this is a really good matchup for us. They are going to decide to swap out right away and they swap into Lapras, which is even better because now we have a Pokemon that core breaks this team, right? Sacred Sword and the typing that we have fighting water is beautiful against a Lapras and an Aggron. So we're going to go ahead and now counter swap into Lantern as this is a good position. Yes, they're probably going to be going straight for Skull Bash right here. But this is a good position for us to load up on extra energy because Surf is only four Ice Shards and it's not going to be enough to take us out. So we can easily start counting right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw Thunderbolt before we get to 100 energy, which we're basically at. If they decide to shield, we can just farm down. But now they're in a tough position as they bring in Ludicolo with Razor Leaf. So this is going to be a good game as Thunderbolt here does quite a bit of neutral damage. We have the Kiram in the back with Dragon Breath that's going to be resisting the Razor Leaf damage. And then we have Keldeo for Aggron. Um, with sacred sword so there's not a lot they can do just like i got rps basically in the back or uh, in the previous game against jealous and sand slash and obama snow i'm rpsing this team which had agron lapras and ludicolo so not a lot they can do but it's still gonna be fun to watch this keldeo go to town here as it's so spammy poison jab and sacred sword just think about that coverage right you have the poison jab for grass. You have it for fairies, especially Alola Ninetales and Obama Snow in this meta. Sacred Sword is neutral across the board, except for maybe something like a Charizard or maybe something like a Jellicent, which we have good answers for in the back. As we'll have to see if this can one shot. I don't think it's going to be enough because Agron is extremely tanky. Yeah, it's not enough to one shot, but that is still an incredible amount. And we can get to another one in time. Keldeo, spicy and fun. In this Weather Cup meta, as we do see Ludicolo come in, we're going to go ahead and just go for the Glacite to close this game out. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. Let me know down in the comments, what what uh, what Pokemon are you guys running? Are you guys running anything spicy? I think Keldeo is, I think, rank 14 overall. So in terms of ranking, it's not spicy. But in terms of usage before, this thing is extremely spicy. All right, Obama Snow Lee. This is beautiful. It shreds Obama Snows. So you just have to obviously watch out for Energy Ball because of our typing, right? Water and Fighting. We're only going to take super effective damage from that Energy Ball. So we're going to go ahead and let this go. This was just a Weather Ball. It wasn't enough energy for Energy Ball, and we heavily resist it. So we'll see them potentially swap out here soon as they now are going to go ahead and go for another Weather Ball. That's fine. Sure, they are chipping down my health. 
but I get to save my shields and keep Lantern away. Now they swap into Tapu Fini. So what I'm going to do here is build up to two Sacred Swords and then counter swap into Lantern. And once again, my Lantern is only level, level 41.5 out of 50. I only used 30. I only had 30 XL candy to power it up. And it's not even a hundo, it's just a lucky, like I told you guys at the beginning. But it can still fulfill the role that it needs to in this meta, which is countering Pokemon like Tapu Fini, countering Pokemon like Charizard, countering Pokemon like Lapras. But it's obviously going to lose to Abomasnow. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let this go, as the energy ball will be enough to take us out. But they throw a weather ball, which I thought was kind of interesting, because now... I might be able to take out Abomasnow with two Thunderbolts as the first one does land, but they counter swap into Jellicent, um, which is totally fine by me. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Surf because obviously we need to do as much chip damage as possible, but they do give up their final shield thinking it was a Thunderbolt and Kiram now has a lot better matchup in the 2-0 shield and we can safely shield all of this as Shadow Ball will not be landing today. I don't think Shadow Ball would one-shot us anyways, but we just want to make sure we keep the Kiram healthy because we don't want our Keldeo to have to face off against it even if it had 2-0 to zero shields. It would still be a tough matchup for us, especially with the Hex damage since we are so low. So we're giving up two shields right here, and Obama Snow is also out of energy, and our Kiram has, or our uh, Keldeo, I should say, has loaded energy. So we're just going to go ahead and throw the Dragon Claw right away counter swap now into keldeo instantly and go for sacred sword to close this game out as obama snow has no shields left it has nowhere to go boom takes it out good game all right moving into the next one we have Keldeo on the lead versus Blaziken. So this is a tough one because Blaziken's counter damage really starts to add up even though we resist um, the fire or a blaze kick potentially. And we obviously need to watch out for the uh, blast burn. Uh, even though it is resisted, it's going to be enough to take us out or the brave bird here. So we're going to go ahead and give up a shield. We're going to try to go for double sacred sword and it is just going to be a blaze kick on their side. We're going to try to go for a double sacred sword, but they make a beautiful swap now into Poliwrath. So this is kind of a tough situation because now I'm going to have to counter swap into Lantern and hope to load up on energy. We only have one shield left, and this Poliwrath has Dynamic Punch, which I believe it does. Yeah, it does have Dynamic Punch. Lantern is now not as safe. Two dynamic punches is going to be enough to take us out. So we have to go for a Thunderbolt early in order to try to take out the Polyrath or get that final shield, but they let it go through. Now their final Pokemon is going to be a Shadow Swamper, which is obviously going to be dangerous given the opportunity to load up on energy, which they clearly have right here. A Surf is not going to be enough to threaten a shield. So they're going to go ahead and go for the charge move. I'm kind of thankful they threw a bit early here instead of loading up extra, but they actually are still able to get one more mud shot, which is unfortunate. Now, I have to bring in Kiram, but I also know Blaziken is in the back with energy. So I'm hoping I can farm down, but I'm actually going to try to catch the charge move here on Keldeo as it is going to be resisted, but I don't know how much damage this is actually going to do. So I'm hoping I can get to a sacred sword, but I definitely cannot. So this might have been a mistake. I'm forced now to throw the dragon claw. Now looking back at this, I should have just not thrown and just fully farmed down and shielded the charge move because Swampert on the back end Oh man, this is tough. My hope was to be able to get to a Dragon Claw versus the Swamper that's going to be coming in. But we basically, uh, I think I was one turn behind right there as they do get to the Hydro Cannon in time and is unfortunately enough to take us out. So that's going to be a good game. So a slight misplay on my end right there. Could have played it a bit better, but that's okay. Moving to the next one, we got Keldeo versus Walrein. Now, this is fun. Seeing a Shadow Walrein and a Keldeo. Now, we do see a swap into Poliwrath, so we're going to go ahead and go for Sacred Sword. And then we're going to look to swap out into Lantern here eventually. As we do land it, which is beautiful, we're going to let them throw the charge move first. I don't necessarily need to shield, so I'm going to go ahead and let it go through, and it was actually a power-up punch, which is fine by me. I can now go for another Sacred Sword here, trying to get a shield from them, and then I'll look to go 
into Lantern because they likely um, don't have Dynamic Punch and Power Up Punch. It's more likely they have Scald or Ice Punch paired with Power Up Punch, and it is going to be the Scald. So this means we can just fully farm down with Spark. And now this is a beautiful opportunity where we kind of core break, right? Polyrath and Lantern, or Polyrath and Wall Rain is core broken by this lantern. They swap back into Shadow Wall Rain, which is beautiful because now I have a lot of energy loaded for them and they're going to be forced to shield in this kind of situation as one Thunderbolt will land and I'm going to try to go for another here, which I do. So getting two shields this early, we still have Keldeo, we still have Kiram in the back. This is looking to be a good game, but we do need to be careful about what that third Pokemon can be, as now Walrein is going to go ahead and throw the charge move to try to take us out. Ice School Spear, not enough to take us out, but they can Powder Snow down. And our Keldeo as well doesn't have loaded energy. So unfortunately for me, I didn't have an, a charge move banked, which would have been a lot better in this situation. So now that I shield an Ice School Spear, I'm going to be forced to throw the Sacred Sword right away. I don't want to farm down and have to give up a shield potentially on Earthquake. So it's better to just go straight for that Sacred Sword. And then we will see that it is going to be a Charizard in the back. So we're going to go ahead and swap into our Kiram. And then we have to watch out. I mean, Dragon Claw does do super effective damage, and we just got to shield the charge move, basically, right? But we have to watch out for the Sacrificial Swap, so I'm going to go ahead and just throw it right now, um, just right away as soon as I could to get that Dragon Claw damage, because now we should be able to fast move down before they can throw a charge move, and then it's just going to be the Polyrath in the back with no health, and that is going to be a good game, very well played. This team was so much fun to use. I loved trying out Keldeo for the first time and Kiram, and then just using Lantern, even though it isn't maxed out. Like I showed you guys at the beginning, it's level 41.5. Um, but it's typing and it's moveset and it's bulk was enough to do well against the Pokemon it's supposed to do well against. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.